So just started the session. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Derek. I will be the moderator for this session. The, this session this morning is experience of developing an online health postgraduate diploma during COVID-19. Uh, please leave yourselves muted uh, and cameras off during the presentation. If you'd like to ask a question, uh, please wait until the Q&A portion after the presentation. Or um, on the left-hand side, you'll see a section called shared notes. Uh, feel free to uh, use that. Try to use only the uh, chat box for chat, uh, not questions for their presentations. If anyone has any technical issues during this uh, session, uh, please use the users panel on the left. Look for my name, Derek Ramsey. Send me a direct message. I'll try to assist you in any way uh, that I can. Uh, this session is being recorded. It will be available available at a later date on the Aperio YouTube channel. Um, so uh, if you guys want to go ahead and get started with the session, uh, go ahead. Great. Thank you so much. Thank Am you, I Hi, yes, you are Hi everyone. Cool. I just want to... Hi. I just want to start sharing my screen. Um, if it's not working for you, Taz, then I can try from my side. We'll give you one second. Hope this is the right one. See wrong side. Sorry, let me just go back. Can we see? I'm still seeing the the welcome. Yeah, who, who's going to share the screen? I'll make sure I get them the right rights here. Oh, I'm here. sharing. I'm sharing. Are we good? I'm sorry. Um, when you said I'm sharing, I'm not sure which user that was. Oh, sorry, Tess name. <laughs> okay. Okay, I just set uh, for you to have presenter and moderator access. Can you try to share uh, one more time? Share your screen. Sure. One second. Share your screen. Okay, it's working? loading. Yep, it's loading. Give it just a second. It's about there. It's trying. Taking a little longer than usual. I wonder if it's because it's on um, slides. OK, we are good. Are we good? Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to the session on our experiences of developing an online postgraduate diploma. And today, myself, Tasneem, Lauren, and Budad will present in. So roughly the outline for today's session is um, just giving an overview of what the postgraduate diploma in emergency care is, what design process we followed, and best practices associated with that, and our key lessons learned. Okay, so the overview. So why did we create an emergency care diploma? Emergency medicine and emergency care is a relatively new field and it's, it's quite off, more popular in big urban centers in South Africa, but there remains huge gaps in, in, in knowledge and skills outside of these centers in peri-urban and rural hospitals. So the goal to create an emergency care diploma was important for doctors and nurses and paramedics who were one struggling with the gap from going from an undergraduate degree to a master's degree, those not quite eligible for masters, um, not interested in doing a research degree like masters, and then unable to attend a contact course in Cape Town. So for example, um, the emergency care department, they do have a master's degree, but it's you have to attend multiple sessions um, in a face-to-face -face blocks in Cape Town, which is quite costly for those who want to gain expertise in emergency care. So what was our design brief? We are learning designers who help work with academics to bring a, a course or a program to life either in a blended or online mode. 
So the design brief was to create a one-year diploma from scratch. So it wasn't a, a course or program that we were converting. We had a team of eight academics. Um, the goal was an estimate of 15 students for the first year of the program. At the beginning, the mode was quite uncertain of whether um, uh, we should create the program in a full online mode or in a blended mode, but ultimately we decided in an online mode. And this was actually before um, the pandemic happened. So in hindsight, it was the best decision to actually create an online degree rather than a blended degree. Um, the program is made up of, of six courses, which totals 120 credits. So that's 1,200 of notional hours. And we have to be in mind that the people taking this degree are also people who work clinical workers, shift workers during a pandemic. And then another part of the brief was to provide African perspectives um, and use journals from on emergency medicine. So this is the course team and structure. So we have the postgraduate diploma in emergency care and we have six courses under that. Um, I, um, I am the coordinator for the program. So I uh, monitor the entire um, program development and then I also was a learning designer on one of the courses, um, Introduction to Postgraduate Studies. And we have Lauren who will present after me, who is the lead learning designer for three courses and we died who took care of two courses. So we currently are, um, the program is currently running and we sort of in the middle between first semester and second semester. This is a little bit of a very um, high level timeline. This program was actually initiated way back in 2014, but eventually got kickstarted in 2019 with my department who works with academics to develop courses. Um, it was a slow start and just uh, before the pandemic started, we were quite um, deep in, in course design. And then once it started, we actually had to pause the program because um, many of our staff were emergency care um, lecturers, but they actually had to take on clinical work during the pandemic and that help with the field hosp hospitals. So we actually had to pause the degree for roughly six months, but it meant that it didn't mean that the course launch date would shift actually. So for us, it, meant, it was quite scary because we were losing six months of production time, but it still meant that we had to launch at the same time. Eventually we launched in um, March, 2021 this year, we did get about an extra month. Uh, the, the dates did shift um, for a month because of um, the consequences of, of obviously what's been happening. And we're sort of in the middle of the program running this year in June, 2021. Um, as a result of the way the process and it played out, we had to develop quite a few new ways of working. For one, we had to move the entire design and development process online. And typically we work, we work in quite a face-to-face -face environment with workshops, sticky notes, flip charts, boards, and this had to entirely change to an online process and obviously all of our team meetings. So it, it was quite difficult to move online because it meant that often decisions um, took longer and whereas it was easier to work right next to each other and to be able to make those decisions. It meant also no in-studio filming. Often we film in a sort of a small room with a, with a nice high definition camera, but due to the small space, we obviously could no longer film there. So we had to shift to a lot of do-it-yourself filming. And eventually when the cases decreased, we were able to do some elements of on-site to outside filming. I'm going to hand over to Lauren who's going to talk us through the design process and some best practices. Thank you, Paz. Um, so I'll talk about the design process that we follow here at UCP and how we went about translating that to eventually have an online course on our, our MS. Um, so we start, the design process start with um, creating personas and we create these to represent the students who we were expecting on the course and we kept these personas front of mind as we went into the design and this was expecting our clinical staff and so they the design needed to accommodate their schedules 
And we also needed to consider the students' previous online learning experience, if any, and their academic literacy skills. Um, since a lot of the students um, did quite practical training before coming into this post-graduate post diploma, and we needed to design with all of that in mind. Um, go on, Taz. Thank you. So at UCT, we use the ABC learning design method to design our um, courses and use this to design each of the six courses that are part of this program. And this method puts emphasis on what learning activities students will be doing in the course. The learning activities can be divided into these six learning types, which are acquisition or read, listen, watch um, on our end, and discuss, produce, investigate, collaborate, and practice. Um, so the ABC methodology includes these color-coded cards for each of the learning types. And this is very useful for when we um, design the course, we can visualize um, how, how the course design is looking. For instance, if a course um, is more discussion focused, this would be easy to see um, in the course design following the, the color coded cards. And then each of these learning types is associated with a particular Lauren. are then linked to a specific online tool or tools. And this is an example of what um, the, I'm sorry, I think my connection dropped. Can you I can hear you now. Me? Yeah, okay. it went away for a bit, put you back. Sorry, thank you. Um, so this is an example of the learning activities related to the acquisition learning type. Um, and Seems like we're having some connectivity issues. Yeah. Lauren? <laughs> Let's just wait for a second. Okay. Maybe we've lost her. I'm here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, try again. And see how it goes. Yes, we can hear. Okay, thank you, Taz. I move on to the next slide. Thank you. So um, once we have designed, once we have decided on the learning types and the learning activities, we we translate this to a spreadsheet. And this is so the design is refined in a sheet using the ABC methodology to plot out the learning activities and the, the related technology needed for the activity. And this is a collaborative process between learning designers and academics. And we, we can all see how the learning types are um, coming together um, and how it position and application activities for the students and we can use this to make sure that we we keep a good balance between acquisition and application okay next one Taz. so from the design in the spreadsheet we move on to to develop the content in google doc where the teaching content is added according to the learning activities designed in the spreadsheet so during content development the learning designers and the academics work together in these Google Docs to create, review, discuss, and finalize the content that will eventually be added to the OMS. And the reason for this, for doing this phase, specifically in documents, is or instead of going directly to the LMS from the spreadsheet, 
is the documents allow us to review and discuss and edit the content. Designing on the spreadsheet. Next one, Taz. So from the Google Doc, we build the course onto the OMS. Um, in in UCT case, it's um LMS, Sakai based LMS called Rela. And this process can now happen fairly smoothly and easily because the content is already added to the doc. So it's a matter of um, translating it onto the LMS and copying, pasting, and adding all of the graphic elements as well um, to the LMS. Um, sometimes we find that certain activities don't translate well, and then we we have to rethink how the LMS can um, or how it can be included in the LMS and which tool would be best to use. Okay, next one. So um, a quick note about consistency that we also had to keep in mind during the design of the course or the program. Um, there are six courses, three learning designers and eight academics. So consistency was important to keep in mind as we designed this course or the program. Um, and we had to keep this in mind through design, through development and through build. Um, of, of all six courses. And so the elements of consistency that we included are to, to design a color palette that can be used in graphics, in PowerPoints, and on the LMS itself. And also to design icons for the different learning activities that can be used on the LMS to provide um, a visual prompt for students as they follow the learning path um, on the lessons pages. And a third um, element of consistency is to design a template for the lessons pages that we could use on all of the courses. And this template consisted of having a course banner at the top and then having um, the learning outcomes listed or first having a, a welcome message from the academic and then having the learning outcomes listed and then having the key um, activities for the week listed as well. And then all of the lesson space has also included a checklist for students to track their own progress. Um, and that's it from the designs. Um, Great, you can move on to key lessons learned. Hi everyone, my name is Widad. And in this section of the presentation, I will be talking about key lessons learned by the learning design team. You can go to the next slide, Tasneem. So one of the first lessons learned whilst working on this postgraduate diploma program during early COVID lockdown mode was that Vula was an LMS, um, as an LMS, has a potential to take teaching and learning to new heights. So before, the LMS was predominantly used as a resource repository tool. So together, academic teams and learning designers at UCT were learning about it and exploring how we could use all the tools within Vula. Um, and this, in many ways, has changed our attitudes towards an LMS or Vula and also ways of working. A second lesson that we learned um, you can go to the next slide, Tasneem. A second lesson learned was that as learning designers, we need to be creative in how we work with tools on Vula rather than pulling out our hair and saying, oh my word, this cannot work. Um, for example, as you can see on screen, several activities in the storyboard, um, they require us to you know, implement certain learning or activities. But then we have to say, oh my word, how will this look on Vula? Um, and we have to reconsider using tools or how we can um, find other tools to use it to make that activity possible. Um, next one, Tasneem. 
The third lesson learned is that tools can provide valuable insight on how to design and set up future courses. Since this was our first fully online postgraduate program we worked on, we were interested to know what was working, particularly if interaction and engagement was sufficient, as these are very important aspects in education, but a real challenge in the online mode. As a way to do so, we observed how the tools such as polls, checklists, comment bar, forums, as well as ex as well as internally embedded tools such as padded boards and who clap questions were being used by students in the first semester courses, as well as what was being reported as seen on this example about the sign up tool. Through this observation, we gained insight on how effective the chosen tools were together with where they were placed in the course. We also noted the kinds of challenges that students were experiencing with the tools and the manner in which we had set it up. Through doing this, it has given us ideas on what can be done better for second semester courses, as well as how we can continue improving our own practice through observing tool usage and making it part of our course design process. Um, just another lesson learned, I'm just conscious of time, um, is that we learned that online formal assessments exams is hard, especially when, when one has to consider aspects such as um, proctoring and surveillance. Online assessment needs to be clearly thought through, not only in the storyboarding phase, but from the perspective of how it will be implemented in the online space. Um, so we had not thought about, you know, cheating and about the different time zones, all of which yeah, is very important in the online space. I'm going to leave it for there um, up until this lesson. There are obviously more lessons learned, but I think we'd like to take some questions and get some feedback and comments. And if there's no comments or questions, I can go to the final lesson learned. <laughs> uh, Didi did post a question in the Let's see. Please share an example activities did not translate well into the LMS and how did you work around that challenge? OK, so perhaps if we can go back to the second lesson, because um, I didn't fully explain this. I just looked at time and I got a bit worried. But for example, in Vula, the test and quizzes tool, um, we were tasked to design a quiz that looked at um, you know, how far students could get through questions and at the same time have a scoreboard to note who were, um, you know, the, the students that were getting the most correct answers and who were the fastest. But the Vula tool, the test and quizzes school, could not do this. And in that instance, we um, had to use Google Docs. We had to embed Google Docs as a way to keep track um, of, you know, the like, uh, um, like a scoreboard or a leaderboard. Um, so that is how we worked with that um, and, and also that the limitation to that. Well, thanks for that. I'll go to the last lesson. All right, Tasneem, over to you. So we're going to end off with uh, um, our last lesson, and it's the importance of cohesion and collaboration across a program. So um, what was really important to this process and this design process, working as a team, um, going through the ABC methodology that Lauren showed you, was ultimately ending up with this result of where courses were not um, individual courses part of a program, but they actually felt um, interconnected as part of the, the diploma. So what you see on screen is actually three different courses that were part of first semester. And we use those elements, not just of like design, look and feel, but the, the tools we use and the way it worked and how assessments related to, to each other to build good cohesion and collaboration in the course. So that students could think of, you know, they could look at it as a diploma, not as six different courses. Yeah, and that is some of our, um, our, our design process, best practices, and lessons learned. Thank you. Are there any more comments or questions that we can speak to?
We have a couple people typing. Okay. Uh, Didi asked, what feedback have you received from academics? So we received multiple feedback. Is there maybe specific feedback that she wants to, to know about? Because I know the design, when we show the academics, like what we've done, like we've taken the documents and um, the text and, you know, um, enacted that all on Vrula. They're always like, wow, they've never seen this before. This is something new. They love it. Uh, but any like, specific feedback, um, Dede, that you're interested in? Just to add to the feedback, um, uh, I have had um, an academic say um, this process has completely transformed the way they approach the other courses and degrees that they teach on, um, both from the aspect of how they, they spend their time looking at the design, how much time they have to put aside for learners to work on different assessments, um, and also how they engage with the technology. Um, so the experience with this diploma extends way beyond um, what they've done with us. Didi did send a follow-up. She was just seeing if uh, anyone had offered suggestions on any improvements. Okay. I think it was um, the other way around where we suggested improvements to to them that they can implement in their other courses. Any other questions or comments from anyone? Okay, doesn't look like we have any other questions. Uh, I would like to thank you uh, three for doing the presentation today. Very well done and very informative. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Nick. Okay. All right. Have a good day, all.